Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another, well, tutorial slash DIY for you. And today I'm going to show you how to make, this is, this is really, really simple. Basically, it is a shawl pin, if you will. And I'm going to tell you, you know, just what you need in order to do so. Of course, you can make tons of personalizations and variations and etc etc but it's really really quite simple basically what it amounts to is a pointy stick and a crocheted ring okay very simple and the beauty of it is is that as opposed to a latching pin um you know this to me it just it seems more mm, natural if you will so basically what it amounts to is you have the two sides of your shawl draped in front and then going with your pointy stick, you sort of poke up two layers, not just the one, you need both layers, and you grab a little bit of each layer, and you poke your stick through, and then boom, you're good. And it's nice and secure, okay? And if needs be, just quickly, whoop, ta-da! And so what I used was, now this, this was the real kicker. I was thinking, you know, what could I use for my pointy stick? I've seen people use DPNs, aka double pointed needles with their knitting. I've seen people use crochet hooks. I've seen people use um, dowels that are sharpened at one end. Yes, you can do all of these things. You could use chopsticks if you want. Um, this, however, I thought was the perfect length, the perfect diameter, and it already came with a point. You're going to love this. I found at Michael's cake pop sticks, bamboo treat sticks. This I thought, ah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. It came in a pack of 30. It was only a couple bucks. Um, this was in the baking section of Michael's. As always, no, I'm not sponsored for any of this. I just want you to know what it is that I found that worked for me, as always. So, I thought these were perfect. You know, I love wood, uh, bamboo, hey, works for me. And they're already pointed. Now, they're not super duper freaky pointed. Um, you know, I mean, you could even use like a stylus, if you will. Um, you may want to use a little bit of fine grade sandpaper, you know, around the tip there to make it just a little bit more pointed, you know, but then again, you don't want to impale yourself either, you know. You know, you want to be careful, by all means. Um, also, at this end, you could round that out a little bit, or you could create, put something like a large hold bead at the top to act as a stopper. There are lots and lots of variations. Now, as for the ring, aha, well, the ring was another thing. You know, how do I solve this problem? Well, I found these. These are called Cabone Rings. Now, this is by Loops and Threads. Again, found it at Michael's. Came in a pack of five. And all I did was crochet, a single crochet stitch, around the entire ring. It's really, really quite simple. I'm going to show you how to do that, of course. Of course. Now, there are a lot of different sizes and kinds of rings that you can use. I liked these because, again... They're made out of wood. I'm a big fan of that. You could potentially use bangle bracelets, um, hoop earrings. You want something to be stable enough. You know, you don't want it to be too flimsy flimsy. Um, also, you could use sh uh, shower curtain rods or curtain rods in general. The only problem with that is that usually it's not a solid ring and there would be a gap or there's sort of a, like a locking mechanism that connects the the two ends together, and then it's not a solid ring, which I'm not a huge fan of. If you could find a large, large enough uh, keychain ring, that might work as well, like a binder clip ring, that could work. So there are options. I just wanted to let you know that yes, you can find these things relatively simple. You know, you just got to keep your eyes peeled. So again, you know, these were bamboo treat sticks and cabone rings. And, you know, you can make five of them per pack with this, which I thought was a pretty good deal. 
Now, as far as the yarn that I used, I used leftover yarn from this shawl to make this, so I knew it was going to match. So you can totally coordinate your look, which is, oh, fabulous. Love it. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll show you how to do a very simple, simple way of dressing up one of your rings. Alrighty. All right, so I'm going to be using a size I 5.5 millimeter hook and worsted weight yarn, just what I happen to have lying about. And as for these rings, these are two inch rings. You can really use whatever works for you. Just letting you know what worked for me. So basically what it amounts to is you have your yarn and you're going to hold it flush with the ring. Now my tail is going this way, that one right there. And we're going to be crocheting over that as we go. So basically you insert your hook and you grab the yarn and pull a loop through. All right. And then chain one. Now, yes, this is rather fiddly in the beginning, but it gets a lot easier as you go on. So I have my slip stitch and I've got my chain one. Now we're just going to do single crochets all the way around. And what I find helps is this tail right here, we're going to crochet over that so that it's not going anywhere and it'll be that much easier to deal with in the future. So basically just going in underneath that tail into the ring, grabbing your yarn, pulling through both loops like so and do the exact same thing over and over and over. Now you may need to practice this just a little bit to get the hang of it because like I said, it is a little bit fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, once you get going, you're good. Ta-da! And of course, yes, you can swap colors you can do really whatever it is that you like. This is just sort of, you know, a, a launching pad springboard for you to do really whatever it is that you like. You could incorporate beadwork to really jazz it up. You know, me, I have nothing against, you know, something that's very simplistic. You know, I don't want people to be staring at my shawl pin. I want people to be staring at the shawl, you know. But this way, the shawl pin will complement the shawl, you know. Granted, there are some colors that you may wish to do because they pretty much go with anything. Um, black, gray, off-white, you know, sort of neutrals, you know, the, the lack of color. All right. So I've been doing a bunch. I'm almost done, quite frankly. You know, it goes that fast. And if you're finding that your stitches are too loose or whatever, you know, you can basically just sort of scrunch them so that it fills up the ring more. Okay? It's really, really that easy. Now, what you could conceivably do. I haven't done this yet myself, but what you could conceivably do is base a pattern off of your single crochets that you're doing. And what I mean by that is sort of like an edging, you know, um, like if it's in a multiple of say three or four stitches or whatever, you could then work off of these stitches to create sort of like a frilly edge around the entire thing. You know, keep in mind, the more extravagant that you get with it, you know, the, the more it's going to take away from your shawl. And it's like, oh, focal point, there's the pin. So I crocheted around this tail quite a bit. I'm just going to leave off on that. And I'm just going to crochet around the ring right now. All right. So just going to do a bunch more single crochets until I reach the end. Now, as far as the 
scrunching together of the stitches. I'm going to show you what I mean. See, right now, if I, I left off, you know, you can see some gaps, like right there. So what you can do, quite frankly, is push the stitches so that they are closer together. See all that space I just created? You know, you don't want to have gaps in between the loops on your ring. You know, you don't want the ring to show, unless if that's your, your preference. By all means, you can do what you like. Um, me, I'm trying to cover the ring as best I can. And then if you find, of course, that you have more shawls than you have rings, which is always a possibility, you can always cut the yarn off of the ring, reuse it, you know, dress it up with some different yarn by all means, you know. So right now I have reached the end of the road. So when that happens, you go into the first stitch that you created. It can be a little bit fiddly, but you go into the first stitch with a slip stitch. And I'm gonna get it. Haha, ha, I got it. So you go into that first single crochet stitch and do a slip stitch like so. You can snip your yarn, pull out your yarn, and this tail end that I have here, you know, you can cut this, no problem. You know, you can just snip that off. It's not going to go anywhere. As for this, after you cut it and pull your yarn up, you can then work that tail of yarn underneath all of these loops, just like you did with the tail, and you are good to go, you know. Also, um, like I said, you know, you can dress this up with some beads. What you would do would be to string the beads onto the yarn first, and then as you're crocheting, slide the beads to your work, and, you know, you can incorporate them that way. You could sew on some sequins. That might look nice, too, to snazz it up a little. You know, there are lots and lots and lots of ways of dressing it up, making it your own, and, you know, embellishments, you know, that that's the word I was looking for. It's a lot of fun. It's really, really simple. And you can coordinate, you can contrast, you can do all sorts of fun little things. You know, like for instance, this could conceivably go with this shawl. You know, it doesn't clash terribly, you know. Um, I, I love the idea. And the materials are easy to find, you know relatively inexpensive. You know, the the sticks that you get, I mean, I am not going to need this many sticks, but maybe I'll make some cake pops one of these days. I don't know. As for the rings, you know, I can make five. You can cut the yarn, reuse the, reuse the rings. It's a fabulous little technique, and I hope that it helps you to think outside of the box and do your thing as well. So if you found this video helpful, please give me a little thumbs up button down below. And also, please subscribe for more because I do try to post videos as often as I can, whether it's crocheting, knitting, audiobook narration, or my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I have a blast playing games, doing commentary, and all that good stuff. Would love to see you there, too. So until next time, everybody, I want you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.